Hi there and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. This week I'm sure we've all noticed a sudden change from the late arrival of summer heat that we saw through the start of September to the autumnal low pressure systems, the wet and windy weather we've become accustomed to during the last few days. And over the next couple of days, this area of low pressure dominates things. At the time of recording, there are a number of yellow wind and rain warnings in force. I'm not going to go into the details of the next couple of days because they can be found on our short period weather forecasts on YouTube, on the app and the website. Suffice to say, a band of rain is crossing the UK. It's going to clear by the start of Thursday, followed by sunny spells and showers through Thursday and Friday as that low pressure is close by. With the dip in the jet stream, we're going to see cooler weather arrive as well, some chilly nights later this week and into the start of the weekend. But a ridge of high pressure at the start of Saturday will bring a fine start to the weekend. However, trouble looms to the west of the UK by this stage in the form of an ex-hurricane Nigel. Now let's rewind the clock to see where Nigel comes from and this is the time of recording. Nigel, a powerful hurricane in the mid-Atlantic, but also this area of low pressure exiting Canada picked up by the jet stream. Now watch what happens as Nigel pushes north. It gets caught up in the jet stream flow. It starts to dance around this area of low pressure and eventually they merge in some form or the other. The specifics here may differ by the time we get to Sunday, but all the computer model output has this ex-hurricane, this large area of low pressure sitting to the west of the UK. Now, fortunately for us, the worst of the winds close to the centre of this ex-hurricane aren't expected to cross the UK. But with the jet stream coming up like that, and with the various remnants of that ex-hurricane circulating around this area of low pressure, we are expecting some unsettled weather as we start the weekend. A contrast to how we begin the weekend Plenty of sunshine actually on Saturday morning. A chilly start, colder perhaps than we've seen in many places during September so far. A touch of frost in some northern parts, but the cloud builds through the day and it's a fine day for most. Just a few showers for western and northern Scotland. A bit of a breeze for Shetland and Orkney, but elsewhere it's light winds, bright spells and lower temperatures fairly widely across the UK compared with what we've seen so much of through September so far. Nevertheless, feeling perfectly pleasant given the fine conditions. Saturday's the day, especially if you're in the West, for getting out and about because by the end of the afternoon, Northern Ireland starts to see the first signs of uh, the remnants of this ex-hurricane, outbreaks of mainly light rain feeding in by this stage. Then we get to Sunday, the rain turns heavier, becomes more widespread and increasingly affects especially parts of Wales, northwest England, southwest Scotland. The heaviest of the rain will be over west and southwest facing hills of these parts. And of course, these areas have seen a lot of rain during the last couple of days. So further rain on Sunday and into Monday could cause some issues. We'll be monitoring that very closely. Either side of that, you'll notice a fine day for northern Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland as well, and uh, a mostly fine day towards the southeast, but the cloud building through the day. And with the winds coming from the south, actually, for many, it's a warmer day, although it won't feel warmer as the wind and rain arrive into these western parts, but 21 Celsius there for the southeast, mid-teens for northern Scotland. It is turning windier, though, later Sunday as uh, uh, Nigel heads a little bit closer, some tightly packed isobars bringing the risk of gales to western and northwestern coasts. And the weather front I mentioned across some of these west facing slopes of Wales, northwest England, southwest Scotland, it's slow moving on Sunday night and into Monday, so bringing quite significant amounts of rainfall, risk of more than 100 millimetres over some of the hills, for example. Eventually, through Monday and into Tuesday, that does push southeastwards, followed by a mixture of sunny spells and showers from the northwest as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday. Now, what happens after that is subject to a little bit of uncertainty. If you're watching our deep dive yesterday, you'll have uh, seen Alex talk about the increased likelihood of high pressure through next week. And that's not entirely out of the question, but things have slightly changed in the last 24 hours. And to explain why, let's take a look at this colourful chart. Now this shows the probability of either low pressure or higher pressure being close to the UK or being influential on the UK's weather each day from Wednesday the 20th of September to Wednesday the 4th of October for the next two weeks. Just focusing on the top row for now, 
and the dark blues for the next five days indicate low pressure is 100% likely, basically. Then the blues get lighter into next week, but still indicate that lower pressure is more likely than higher pressure before the reds begin to take over at the start of October, although that is a long way off, and I'll talk more about that in a moment. What you will notice though, if you look at the previous rows, the ones below, these are previous model runs. So the one below is 12 hours before, the one below that is 24 hours before. And so what we were looking at yesterday was the balance of probability was in favor of higher pressure, these reds. And then those reds have turned to blues for next week. That's the crucial time in the last 24 hours. So this kind of chart is useful looking at trends in the computer model output through time. And uh, what can make you nervous as a meteorologist is if you see this sudden change and it's important to see if it's maintained with future computer model runs. So we'll see about that. But the question is, why is it changed in such a manner? Now, to answer that, we need to look at Thursday. This is tomorrow at the time of recording and out towards Cuba and Florida. And this little kink in the isobars, indicative of a forming area of low pressure. And that low, a tropical system, moves north along the eastern seaboard, deepens, uh, gets picked up by the jet stream. And by Sunday, that started to become influential on the weather across the North Atlantic. And in fact, exactly how that low interacts with the jet stream and how the jet stream interacts with that low, this two-way complex interaction, will have big ramifications on our own weather into next week. And to demonstrate why, let's take a look at two different computer model runs side by side. This is the most recent European computer model run. This is from 24 hours earlier. And this is like one of those spot the difference charts. So I've identified three significant differences. If you want to play along at home, feel free to pause the video before I give them away. But basically looking at this area of low pressure in the most recent computer model run, you'll see that it's a bit more elongated. It's spreading a bit further north. Equally, the warm air associated with it is also pushing a little bit further north compared with 24 hours earlier. And a third difference, this cooler air over North America is pushing a bit further south. So in essence, the most recent computer model run has lower pressure in this region and more of a temperature contrast. And those differences become even more amplified if we push forward through time from Saturday at 12 p.m., the 23rd of September, to 1 a.m. Uh, Sunday. And that difference, that lower pressure pushing to the north there in the bottom panel but not really doing anything in the top panel. The warmer air pushing north and the cooler air wrapping around it. So this temperature difference becomes amplified and then pushing forward another 12 hours. And you'll see, again, this is North America, by the way, in both images. And that low in the top panel doesn't change much. It's not really a significant feature. But in the bottom panel, it develops into two areas of low pressure. And that warm air pushes further north the cold air wrapping around it more significantly, this temperature difference uh, really amplifies. And why is that important? Well, it's important because it impacts the North Atlantic jet stream, which then impacts our own weather. Again, looking at the earlier model run on the top and the most recent model run on the bottom, we've got isobars, we've got areas of low pressure, high pressure, we've got the jet stream indicated here with the colors. And in the most recent model run, those are the areas of low pressure feeding into the jet stream. And what you'll also notice is the jet stream in the most recent model run is more powerful. And that's because of that enhanced temperature contrast I mentioned. And what we're seeing if we push forward through time is these areas of low pressure are helping to strengthen the jet stream. And at the same time, the jet stream is helping to strengthen these areas of low pressure. They don't particularly exist in the earlier computer model runs. So the jet stream in the earlier run is weaker and because it's weaker, it becomes a bit more loopy, a bit more meridional across uh, the Atlantic. And because it's flatter, when it's more powerful in the most recent model run, it deepens these areas of low pressure and skipping forward through time. So this is Tuesday, 1 p.m. It's got hold of this area of low pressure. That's one of the lows that emerged from the original tropical low. There's another one there 
um, hot on its heels coming across. And the Jetstream altogether flatter and more powerful in the bottom panel compared with it being weaker and pushing to the north of the UK in the top panel, allowing higher pressure to build. So finally, pushing forward another couple of frames, by the start of Wednesday, we've got low pressure to the northwest in the most recent model run, higher pressure over the UK in the earlier model run, all because the jet stream is weaker, it's looping around a bit more uh, compared with the more powerful, flatter jet stream in the bottom panel. And by the time we get to Wednesday, 1 p.m., low pressure is in charge of the UK's weather, sitting to the northwest in the most recent model run, as opposed to higher pressure. Now, when we've got these two significant differences in the model output, how exactly do we reconcile them? Well, we don't just run the model twice. We run it dozens of times. And here is a summary of those dozens of computer model runs. And what this shows is the most likely weather pattern for the middle of next week, for next Thursday. And this shows low pressure to the northwest. It's got these colors here indicating spells of rain feeding into the west and northwest with higher pressure to the south and southeast. The second most likely weather pattern, looking at all these dozens of computer model runs, is to have lower pressure a bit further away from the UK and have higher pressure to the east. And that would indicate drier towards the east, wetter towards the west. So although there are these big differences, there are a few themes that we can pull out a few commonalities between these different computer model runs. We, they all have low pressure to the northwest. They all have it less unsettled to the southeast. And with the winds generally coming from the south or southwest, they all have things warmer than average both by day and by night. The main question mark through next week and beyond is the extent to which we've got low pressure influencing our weather from the northwest or higher pressure influencing our weather from the east. Either way, the weather looks fairly typically autumnal, and it looks like staying that way into the start of October. Again, this is the output from dozens of model runs. 1st of October, and it shows once more low pressure, most likely towards the northwest, this time higher pressure towards the south, with fairly warm air evident across much of the UK. And this is the second most likely pattern for the start of October, with lower pressure a bit more influential, bringing unsettled weather to the northwest higher pressure still a bit more influential towards the south and southeast. So the trend is fairly clear. It's warmer than average. We're likely to see spells of rain and wind at times during days 7 to 14. But how wet and how windy and how close those lows are to the west and northwest is currently the main source of uncertainty. But of course, we'll keep you updated as and when we get further information and you can find all the latest online.